In my opinion, Foundry VTT is one of the best virtual tabletops out there for playing tabletop role-playing games. It has a steady cadence of major updates that bring new features, an incredible modding community that adds almost any feature you could need, and it's available for a very fair one-time purchase price of 50 US dollars. However, there are still many ways that it could be improved. Let me give you my five things that should be improved in Foundry VTT. And stick around for the last one because it's a topic I don't think anyone else is really talking about. Hi, it's me, Fondue, your Foundry VTT wizard. I have over 400 hours using Foundry and I want to show you how to get the most out of Foundry VTT. If that sounds like your thing, hit that subscribe button down there to get my latest videos. And I want to start this video by emphasizing that I absolutely love Foundry VTT. It is one of my favorite virtual tabletops out there and as such, I want to see it become better. So the purpose of this video isn't to tear down the software or the team that works super hard on it, but to highlight some pain points that I think I and many of you have with Foundry VTT. I'm going to try to refrain from telling the Foundry team how to fix the issue since I'm not a software designer or engineer and focus instead on explaining the issues that I have. I hope this video reaches the Foundry team and if you're part of the Foundry team and you're watching this, hi, you've made a fantastic VTT and do great work. Keep it up. With that preamble out of the way, let me describe to you my five main pain points with Foundry in no particular order so that maybe in the future, they can be improved. When I first started using Foundry VTT back in the spring of 2021, I was excited by the software and I, of course not knowing any better, started self-hosting my Curse of Strahd campaign. By the way, the campaign is still running to this day, shout out to my players. The first few sessions went without a problem once I figured out how to invite people to my campaign, but then it just stopped working. My players couldn't join my Foundry games and I had no idea why that was. I had to cancel the session and start Googling what is wrong. And then I bumped into the fact that self-hosting is quite complicated, which is my first issue on the list. If you want to self-host a game on Foundry, you need to be quite tech savvy and understand things like port forwarding and other network settings on your PC. And you might even need the help of your ISP to get this fully working. I'm sure for many people, myself included, this is way over their head to start setting up and they would want a simpler solution. Luckily, there are great hosting services like The Forge, which I use myself and can highly recommend, but the fact that you will easily go through this trial and error process and then get hit with an extra cost that you didn't expect is not an enjoyable beginning with the software. I would prefer that users know from the very get-go that they either need to self-host or use a hosting service, which will cost them extra. Heck, somewhere in the future, I would love for Foundry themselves to offer hosting services, but I know that's not a simple thing. I think that if hosting would be made easier and more approachable, it would lower the barrier to entry for new users and improve the first user experience of the software. Together with the last point in the video. Again, I want to emphasize that I'm sure that this isn't an easy issue to solve because they would have solved it already if it was. With hosting covered, let's move on to the next issue I have with Foundry, which is more on the visual side, namely the UI. The UI or user interface of Foundry VTT refers to all the visual elements of Foundry that you interact with. This includes all the left-hand side tools, token controls, measuring, templates, etc., the right-hand side tabs, chat, actors, scenes, etc., and even the landing pages of the software. The current UI in Foundry VTT is all right and gets the job done in my mind, but it could be improved. My main problems with it are that firstly, the in-game UI feels quite small and cramped, at least with my 1440p monitor. I find myself leaning in to see UI elements properly and misclicking on buttons due to the aforementioned problems. It would be nice if Foundry could accommodate for larger and smaller resolutions to make sure both are having an optimal experience. Secondly, I also think that the visual style of the UI feels a little outdated and bland with its muted colors and box-like designs. Luckily, we don't have to imagine what these improvements could look like because we already got the first taste of it in version 11. The landing page and world setup pages got a UI and UX overhaul in Foundry version 11 and boy, is it so much better. The usability is a lot more enjoyable, the visual style feels modern and stylish, and it works well on my monitor. The Foundry team have also said that this UI and UX overhaul will continue in version 12 and 13 and will encompass the in-game UI, which I cannot wait for. By the way, if you want to know more about the first revealed features of Foundry version 12, I made a video going through them. You can find a link to it in the description below, 
and on the upper right hand corner of the screen right now. So the UI is currently an issue, but the Foundry team is aware of it and addressing it. I essentially just wanted to say that the direction you are headed in is good, dear Foundry team, and to stay the course. I can't wait to see the full overhaul eventually. And all these changes pair up well with the last item on the list, by the way. Listen. Do you hear that? Sounds like the next item on the list. As you probably know, Foundry allows you to play music and one-off sound effects while you're running your games, but I've always found this to be unwieldy. Adding new songs to a playlist is clunky because you need to jump through several windows to add them there. Adding songs one by one is tedious and bulk adding songs can feel confusing. On top of that, you have no way to manually reorganize your playlist songs to your desired order. Then, if you want to change between playlists, you have to turn off the previous one manually and then turn on the new one. Lastly, if you want to play an appropriate sound effect for when something is happening in your game, say a wolf howls on top of a hill as the players notice it, you have to navigate back to the playlist tab in the middle of everything else, find the playlist with the sound, and play it. All of this leads to a clunky and unwieldy user experience with the music and sounds of Foundry VTT. I would like for it to be easy to add new songs and sounds to playlists and to have a soundboard-like access to sound effects to play when you need them. Oh, also, could we have a master volume slider in the playlist tab? That would be super nice. Now then, let's talk about a very common pain point with Foundry, mods, and how they break between versions. Whenever there is a new major version of Foundry VTT, for example, jumping from version 10 to 11, many mods have issues in them or break entirely. This is because the Foundry team is changing and improving the core functionalities of the software to bring us new features and improvements. But it also means that mods that rely on those core functions now need to be fixed. To make matters worse, many mod developers move on with their lives, understandably so since all of this is volunteer work, and no longer support mods, which means that broken mods are left in the dust and won't work on the latest version of Foundry. <sighs> Unless some kind soul forks the repo and fixes it. Looking at you, GM screen, thank you for the one who fixed it. This leads to some truly great mods being lost over the years. I know that mods breaking between versions is frustrating for many people, and they would wish this wasn't the case. At the same time, however, I want to acknowledge that this is a very difficult issue to solve because many other games and software have this exact same problem. And remember, the Foundry team is small with less than 10 people in it, if I'm not mistaken, which means that they have very limited resources and time. What I'm saying is I understand the frustration, but also understand the circumstances that the Foundry team is in. I'm not asking for a perfect solution here from the Foundry team, mind you, where no mod would ever break after a new version of Foundry releases, but if the situation could at least be improved where less mods break, that would be a win in my book. Foundry team, I'm sure this isn't an easy one, but please do consider it. Next is possibly the most important of these issues, onboarding new users. One thing I think Foundry VTT is sorely missing is onboarding new users to the software. Onboarding means the process by which a piece of software shows you how to use it and familiarizes you with all the important features it has. Think about the last time you started using a new app or started playing a new game. Usually they will teach you step by step how to use them or play them. This is so that you understand how to use the software and don't drop it for something else. Currently, when you launch Foundry for the first time, there is very little onboarding. For example, if you are a GM using Foundry for the first time, there is nothing in the software telling you how to set up a campaign and invite players to play. You will have to figure this out yourself or read Foundry guides online. Hey there, Edit Fondo here. I made a mistake when I wrote the script for this video saying that there is nothing telling you in the software how to invite people to your game. That's actually not true. When you create a new world, you get a little message, as you can see on the screen right now, that says how you can invite people to your game and where to find more information. I will still posit that I think this sh could be better tutorialized to make for a smoother experience as this message can easily be missed now. And yeah, that's really it. Sorry for the mistake. Back to the video. This isn't terrible, mind you, but it would be better if these tutorials were embedded into the software itself. New GMs would have an easier time setting things up, which would improve their first experience with Foundry and make them less likely to drop it. On top of that, the in-game tools for setting up maps, lighting, walls, scenes, actors, etc. have little onboarding as well. To their credit though, the Foundry team has added something called Tool Clips into the left-hand side tools in version 11. These are tool tips for the specific tools that come with GIFs to showcase how each tool works in addition to the text explaining it. These are fantastic 
and exactly the kind of onboarding new users need. I imagine in the future that all the areas of Foundry will have great onboarding and tutorialization similar to what they did with the tool clips. Improving the onboarding will ensure that more new users will learn to properly use the basic elements of Foundry VTT, which leads to better games and less dropped users. That way we have more people using Foundry, which leads to more revenue for the Foundry team, which means they can put more resources into future Foundry versions. And that would be pretty cool, right? All right, let's recap once more the five pain points I described. First, hosting games is currently complicated, especially for new users. It would be great if this process was streamlined and made easier. Two, the UI of Foundry feels small and cramped and like it could use a visual update. Luckily, the landing page changes in version 11 show us what is to come in the future and it looks great. Three, music and sound handling in Foundry is clunky and cumbersome and could use with an overhaul so that you can more seamlessly incorporate music and sounds into your games. Four, currently when a major version of Foundry VTT comes out, many mods break, which is frustrating. This is a hard problem to solve, but if the amount of mods that break could be decreased at least by a little bit, that would be an improvement. And five, when a new user starts using Foundry, there isn't much that the software teaches you. If the software itself could show you the ropes of how to use it, more people would learn the basics and the software would lose less users. There you have it. If Foundry were to address all of these five things, the software would see remarkable improvements in the long term. This isn't to say that major improvements haven't happened during the two and a half years that I've been using Foundry VTT. On the contrary, I think one of the strengths of Foundry is their timely release of major updates that have brought in major improvements and new features. Again, I want to emphasize that this is a great VTT and that the team over at Foundry have done an amazing job so far. I just want Foundry to be even better. What are the things that you think Foundry should improve in their future versions? Let me know in the comments below. I really want to hear your perspective on this topic. While you're down there commenting, I would also kindly ask for a like to the video and to subscribe to my channel. These small acts make sure that my videos reach more people. Also, also, if you want to show some extra appreciation, completely optional, you can do so by giving me a super thanks. All the funds from that will go towards making better videos in the future. You can find the thanks button below the video. Did you know that I also stream on Twitch? You can catch my streams live on twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European time, which is 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern. Come on over there, hang out with me, and let's talk TTRPGs. You can find a link in the description below to my channel. On the screen right now, you're going to see another video of mine where I go through the first revealed features of Foundry version 12, which include things like event triggers and the next steps in the UI overhaul. Check it out to learn about the future of Foundry. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.